today's video, I decided I would make a video on how to do a touch-free maintenance wash on a ceramic coated vehicle. My Mustang is ceramic coated, so it is gonna be far easier to do a touchless wash on it versus a car that isn't coated. However, you can still do this if you want to. You may just have to up the dilution ratios and kind of play around with it to see and figure out what works for you. I'll also be talking about some of the chemicals I use on my weekly maintenance washes, uh, why I chose them, and I'll be going over a pretty detailed process on how to make your car shine like brand new. I'll talk to you guys about my soap selection. So for maintenance washes, you don't really need anything that's super, super strong of soap. Chemical Guys Glossworks is gonna fit perfectly. It's a pH neutral wash. Uh, it's really thick, but clings well to my paint, even though it is ceramic coated. It foams up really well in this foam cannon over here. It smells good, it's easy to use, so that's why I go with that. For the foam cannon setup, so it is a Trinova foam cannon, so you can purchase these on Amazon for uh, right around $30, I think. And it is nice, it's got a wide neck. If you've ever used a foam cannon, you know how they tend to break off where the, uh, the nozzle meets the, uh, the reservoir for soap. And uh, with this one, I've had no problems and it's been great. The one thing I did to this is I did change the orifice on the inside of it to a 1.1 millimeter orifice, just to create a little bit more pressure and create a little bit thicker foam. For your foam cannon ratios, obviously this is a pretty important part. You don't want to go overboard with it, but at the same time you want to make sure there's enough soap to create thick enough foam to do its job. This is a pretty heavily concentrated soap, so you really don't need anything too crazy in terms of dilution ratios. Check where we're at. So I typically go a little bit higher. I typically try to get to where I'm in between, about halfway in between there, where it's at now, and the A. So we'll add a little bit more here. See where we're at now. And that looks about perfect. I'm gonna give it a tiny bit more. I'll call it good, try to not spill so much soap. Your last step after you fill up your foam cannon with soap is pretty easy. You just top it off with water, and then mix it up really good. You're good to go. All right guys, so step one in your wash process is always gonna be wheels and tires. So for wheels, I like to do wheels first just because Adam's Wheel Cleaner tends to work a little bit better on dry wheels than it does wet wheels. So Adam's Wheel Cleaner is basically a normal wheel cleaner plus an iron remover. So it's gonna attack that brake dust a little bit better and it's gonna make it to where you can clean your wheels relatively well touchless. All right, and so for coverage that you wanna get on your wheels, generally what I do is I'll spray it. Well, gotta get it spraying first, but I'll just put a light coating on all the wheel. Make sure you don't miss any spokes. And then, so what we'll do now is we will let that sit for just a second and we'll move on to the rest of our wheels. As you guys can tell, so it looks like my brakes are bleeding and that is the iron remover that is in Adam's wheel cleaner coming to life and doing its job. So another important thing to note about Adam's Wheel Cleaner or just any cleaner that has an iron remover type of chemical in it is you want to rinse it very, very, very thoroughly. So it wouldn't hurt to just make sure 100% that you don't have any of that iron remover left over just because it will cause uh, almost like chemical burns if it dries. And so that's why you want to rinse it really, really, really good. All right guys, so next up after the wheels, uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean our tires. So I literally just use two things for this. I use Chemical Guys Nonsense Invisible Super Cleaner. Um, it's an all-purpose cleaner, but it's pH neutral. It works really, really well on tires, especially in full strength. And I've got a stiff bristle brush. That's all you need. Spray this on there a little bit, just like so. We'll just get good, even coverage across the whole sidewall. And you really don't even have to let it soak in super long. But now we're gonna take our brush. Just go back and forth across the whole wheel. It's always a little tricky on part 
on the bottom just because of the low profile tires. We'll keep scrubbing. I usually like to do two passes around the tire and then I'll call it good. And just like that, we'll rinse it now and your tires should be pretty clean. Now that we are finished up with our wheels and tires, the next step in the process is just gonna be spraying the car off with water. You can get leaves off if it's autumn like it is now. Uh, you can just spray off dirt, literally just the bigger stuff, and it will fly right off, especially if you have a coated car. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So next thing to do before we actually foam down the car, especially in the hot season, you're gonna get a lot of bugs on your front end and they're really tough to get off. But uh, what I do to get around that is I use that nonsense invisible super clean that we used on the tires. Uh, I just dilute it 10 in one. So that way it's 10 parts water for one part chemical. It goes a lot longer and it does a really good job of getting all the, the really stuck on, baked on bugs off. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So what you will do with this stuff, by the way, you will spray it pretty liberally. That way you're making sure you get good coverage. I just spray the whole front end. You can see that coating's wanting to bead the chemical off. You will spray it anywhere that bug get in contact with. And being that it is the colder months now, I don't have a ton of bugs on there. It was really warm the other day, so I did get a few. That's why I brought this out and just wanted to showcase that to you guys. And so with that uh, diluted invisible super cleaner that we use for our bug solution, I just let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute really, so not too long, uh, with a good sealant, with a good coating, then the bugs should come off no problem. You shouldn't have to touch them. So after we get the bugs off of the car, the next step is gonna be attaching our foam cannon to our power washer and foaming the car down. So we'll go ahead and show you how that goes. guys so we just finished foaming up the car and all we have to do is just wait for right around a minute or so and honestly uh, what I do just as kind of like a time frame I guess for waiting on the foam to sit is once I start foaming the car and make it all the way around the car and have exhausted all of the soap then it's about time to start go ahead and rinsing it so I'll just do that same loop again rinsing it so now that we have rinsed the car it is clean the final step in the process obviously is gonna be to dry the car if you don't know this about ceramic coated cars 
cars, they do water spot a little bit easier just because as you can tell, they do feed water really well. So that's why we're gonna use some forced air to get all this water off of the car. And what I do have is Chemical Guys Pro Blow. It works okay, it definitely does the job. I would prefer a cordless tool, honestly. If you look up Snap Fresh Electric Leaf Blower on Amazon, um, I've also got one of those that I do use for the car. It's less than $100, I remember for sure. But we're gonna go ahead and get the car dried off. Just like that, the car is looking brand new again. It's super easy to do a touchless wash. And on top of that, it is going to prevent scratches on your car a lot better than hand washing. And with hand washing, there are certain techniques you can do to help prevent scratching. But in my opinion, if you don't touch the car, it's pretty hard to scratch it in the first place. So I'll give you a little bit of a shot. It literally is shining like a mirror now, all with a touch-free wash. The only tools I used were that power washer there, my foam cannon, and a couple of chemicals. And just like that, it is looking brand new again. All right, thank you guys for watching my video. If you could leave a like, comment. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. And if you aren't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on my notifications just so you know when I am posting videos. Next week, I am going to make a video in regards to how to build a Coyote Mustang and I'm gonna have different variations. So whether you wanna say all motor, you wanna go boost, uh, I'll be covering all of those next week. So be looking forward to that. But as for now, that's a wrap. We will see you later.